Hey, Daniel Harmon here. Today we're going to take this piece of wood, we're going to put a nice eagle picture on there, we're going to show you how that's done. Give me just a couple minutes, we'll get all set up and we'll get ready to go. Thanks for coming by. So I use <clears throat> transfer film to get my uh, pictures, my art, onto the project. This transfer film, there's lots of different places you can get it. I'll leave a link where I get this. They've changed it a little bit so it doesn't look exactly like this, but I'll leave a link where you can get some transfer film. I like this method of doing it. This way I can use a laser printer, or I can draw it freehand, I can trace it out of a book. It gives me options to be able to get the, the drawing I want onto the project. <clears throat> you just peel the backing off, sticks down, and you're ready to go. This is just giving me a little bit of problems today, so just how it goes when you're recording. But I get the backing off, and I go ahead and center that where I want that. This is a piece of cherry wood. Um, I love the carbon cherry. Uh, the problem with cherry, it burns really quickly, really easily, uh, especially with the high-speed tool. So you have to watch really carefully uh, to not get those burns. If you do get burns in cherry, I'll show you a little later how to take those out, what you need to do to get those out. Here I'm using a 699. It's a long shaft burr. I'll show a picture here in a second. <clears throat> it has carving flutes on both sides. It does carve at the tip, but mostly what we're using are the sides of this burr. The carving section is about just over maybe 3 sixteenths of an inch basically 3 sixteenths of an inch or less. So let's go ahead and get started here. We'll, we'll get this going. Here's a picture of, the, of that 699. Straight up and down plunge cut or angle cut. Here, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use that 699 on the kind of the tip laid down. Just score through that pattern and just get it onto the wood. take that stencil film off <clears throat> we're good to go you can see the design kind of underneath that stencil film it peels off really easy it's not very sticky here I noticed that I didn't score a line from the original drawing trying to decide whether to put it back on or not I ended up just freehanding that leaving that stencil off just using the tool and freehanding the one line that I did miss once you get used to it it's really not that hard to do I'm using that 699 as a plunge cut straight up and down to around the outside of the pattern. That dark line you see appearing, that's the cherry actually burning because of the high speed. Like I said, it burns so easily. It burns quickly. But in this instance, I like it. It helps give it a definition, gives it good depth. I don't have to use you know, stain or anything. It just makes a nice pretty dark line. So I just leave that there. But that's what I'm doing is going up and down, stripping down with that straight bit.
One thing I really like is being able to have a 3D dimensioned model of what I'm carving. This is a cast resin piece. It's hard to see because of the light and the shadow, you can't see it, and then my camera does that weird funny line thing. But again, I like to have something that I can look at that looks like what I'm going to do. Also, really high quality photograph. I try and stay away from artwork because artist representation can, it's artist representation. But good quality photographs, it's a photograph, you see all the detail you need. Here I'm going to switch to a small round carbide. It's about a six, it's probably just under a sixteenth of an inch. And I'll show you what we're going to do with that here. A small round carbide and I'm going to make the general shapes. I don't do the fine detail yet. Carve out the space under the eye. Get that depth in there. Carve out around the eye. Start doing round overs by taking that round carbide and, and carving it down along the edges. Again, taking out around the eyeball. What you do is you use the side of that round and you roll it off. You round off those back edges because the eagle is round, of course. So you just round that down into that hole you carved earlier. You take this here. And what I do, what you, you could do is, we should do anyways, make the general shapes. And then you're going to come back with a smaller carbide and make the finer detail in a minute. But making these general shapes, kind of just bigger head feathers and whatnot. But it's just generalizing the outline right now. We're going to kind of come back with a smaller carbide and make that nicer in a minute. I've gone ahead and I've switched to that smaller round uh, diamond or excuse me, round carbide and I'm making those bigger shapes into smaller shapes just defining that a little better you'll see later on the finished product what that looks like these smaller shapes being re refined so we're just going to skip not skip we're just going to kind of fast forward as as these get going and I have star switched over to the diamond shaped burr. I have a photo here in a second. I'm going to use the side of that burr to do some shaping rounding that off. There's a photograph to show you how the side of that works. Here I'm just going to go ahead and do some rounding over and that's the, the beak. Do some rounding over the eye. Rounding over the flat surface is really what I'm looking at here.
here I've put in a finer grit diamond burr the wood I'm using here is cherry forgot to mention that earlier this cherry wood cherry burns really easily and really quickly with power tools so I like to take this finer grit do really light passes to just take off that burn look uh, apologize I don't know what happens with my lights sometimes they cause that weird line flutter on the video I'm not sure how that happens or what's going on with that someday I'll figure it out I decided to do the torch effect to see what it looked like and I uh, I think it looks pretty good let me know what you think thank you for watching I hope these videos have helped you learn to find that creative spot in your life and help you to open up the gifts that God has given you and I hope that you will uh, be able to take what you've seen here and put it to use in some way in your life to find something creative to do and in the words of Bob Ross have a blessed day thank you